we were uh, we were visiting with the the kids there. Let me tell you, it, it was humbling that we were there. Uh, there were great needs that were there. Uh, I, I'll share just a couple of them with you. There was a uh, a young lady that came through the the, the line there, and uh, she had just buried uh, I think two of her sons uh, in November because they died in a house fire. And then uh, there was a, a two uh, kids that came in. They just buried their dad. They were young kids because of the, they didn't say what it was, but I knew about what happened there. But even in, even in the midst of all that. In all that trouble that they were in, they came in with a smile and, and they looked at me and, and they says, you know, God is still good. And I thought, man, how, how, I, I don't know if I could uh, have that composure sometimes, you know, even, even in the midst of my little deals here. Uh, but uh, I give God the glory for that because he, sometimes God just has a way of reminding us that he is still good. And that he's always good and that uh, no matter what goes on, he is good. And tonight, though, I, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to testify to that tonight to just let you know that God is good, amen, and that uh, he is still on the throne and he is still moving the way he desires to move. And tonight, I just wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, some things that we just we take for granted here, but also something that we need to be mindful of. And uh, whenever you think of the word trouble, what do you think of? You think of somebody that's, uh, you know, kind of um, an agitator. You don't call out his name, okay? You know, and, you know. <laughs> don't everybody look back there at Colton? I'm just saying, no. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, and we, we think of the, uh, um, you know, the Grinch sometimes. You know, when we look at the movie, the, uh, you know, uh, how the Grinch stole Christmas. It, he was nothing but trouble, right? He was a troublesome person. He went in there and, and he, he went into town and he took all the toys and all this other stuff in Whoville. And, uh, but then also, you know, you, you think of that little elf on a shelf thing, right? I mean, when I, I think about that, I was like, you, you know, it was like, man, what you they got, they got some weird stuff with those things, I'm just saying, you know. And have y'all priced them things? Oh, my goodness gracious. It is ridiculous. I'm like, who would pay? Somebody's paying that, not me. But, you know, but anyway, uh, you know, sometimes we, we forget about that we need to be stirring up some trouble. Come on now. I'm not talking about with your family members again, okay. I'm not talking about in the church. But I'm talking about we need to get out here and we need to stir up some trouble in this old world. Because this world needs to have itself turned right side up. See, the problem is it's upside down. And, and we've got so many things going on in there. And, and if we don't get about the Father's business, then we will never, ever see God move and do what he needs to do. Can I tell you, it's okay to be labeled a troublemaker. Come on now. You can, it's okay to be labeled a troublemaker, ain't it, Brother G? It's like, I am a troublemaker. Yes, I, I think I'm, I'm going to get everybody in here a shirt that says, I am a troublemaker. And I dare you to wear it around town. So, if you have your Bibles, turn with me over to 1 Kings chapter 1. 1 Kings I'm sorry, not chapter 1, we're chapters uh, 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, we're going to start with verse 17. And now you're, as you're turning there, I'm going to set the stage for us just a little bit here. But there's, a, there's a young man named Elijah. I mean, some of y'all might know him, some of you might not, okay? But his name was Elijah. And he had this tendency to stir up a little bit of trouble every now and then. And he would, he would get to the point, so point that he would call people out that needed to be called out. Come on now. And we we'll start with verse 17. It says, and it says this, And it came to pass... When Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? 
And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and the hu- that house followed Balaam. You see, you see, too many times we're willing to sit back and let the enemy have his own little glory, and we will just sit there and say nothing because we, we, we won't want to stir up any trouble. Hello? But can I tell you, Elijah had the boldness of God in his life that he didn't care what anybody else thought. He didn't care what anybody else said. He, put, he said exactly what the God had told him to say and do what God told him to do. And I love his response when King Ahab looked at him and says, Hey, is it not that you that troubled Israel? He goes, No, it's not me that troubled Israel, but I trouble your house. I trouble you because you have fallen away from God. You're, you're not doing what God wants you to do. You're willing to go to some other route. And, and he didn't stop with that. He says, look, you got all these people. Now, this is Rick's version. you got all these people over here that you proclaim that are prophets and all this other stuff. And they're worshiping all these other gods. I tell you what, let's do this. Hallelujah. If you think they're so good and they're so bad, let's have a showdown. Come on. How many times in our life do we look at the enemy and say, are you ready for a showdown? No, we look at the enemy and go, well, I'm going to cower down. I'm going to hide over here and I'm going I'm to put my head under the pillow like this just so that you can't see me. And if you can't see me, that means you can't bother me. But can I tell you what? It's just like the storms last night. Hallelujah. Come on now. You may not have been able to see them, but they were coming. And like I said this morning, we can't see the Lord coming, but he's coming. You see, we need to get that boldness about us that we're willing to be labeled troublemakers. Troublemakers for the kingdom of God. That's willing to stand out and proclaim his victory. Proclaim the blood that will be the only thing that can cover the sins of the people of this world. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. We don't deserve it, but God gives it to us freely. Why? Because he loves us, and he loves it whenever you become such a trouble to the gates of hell that every time when you wake up, the hell starts to tremble because they say, look, the troublemaker is awake today. The troublemaker, he's gone crazy again. We just need to hide out for a little bit and let him calm down. Were you ever that type of person that whenever you walked into a room, everybody goes, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Were you that one that was on the, on the team, whether it was baseball, football, soccer, fishing, whatever it was, hello, that you did not want that person on your team because you know they were nothing but trouble? Can I tell you, I was a lot of trouble when I was younger. You didn't have to say that too loud. The apple don't fall far from it. I'm just saying. Yes. But I remember when I was younger, and, and, and I know for a fact, <laughs> man, whenever I would roll up there and think I was going to ask some guy, say, hey, you know what? Uh, would it be possible if I took your daughter out? I knew what the answer was going to be. No. And I said, why not? Because you're nothing but trouble. Can I tell you, I was a lot of trouble. But can I tell you today, I I love to be a troublemaker for Christ than I was for this world. I served the world with lots of me, but I served God with more than I've ever served before in my life. Why? Because I know when I stir up trouble for the Lord, he's got my back. He's got my side. He's got my front. He's got everything out there. And all I got to do is stand and proclaim that I am a child of the Most High God. Label me a troublemaker. That's okay. I'm in a good group. If you have your Bible still open with me, turn with me to Acts. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to start 
with verse 20. And it says this. And here's Paul and Silas, and, and they, were, they were on their way to, to do some ministry, and, and they, this lady came up behind them there, and they kept bothering them, and they cast that demon out of her. And this is what happened. In verse 20, it says, And the, they brought them, they, they bound them up, and they brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Paul couldn't go nowhere that he was not labeled a troublemaker. Like I said, I, I honestly believe that whenever he got ready to go somewhere and all of the other disciples was around him, they probably did rock, paper, scissors to see who would have to go with him because they knew he, they were going to jail. Something was going to happen. But Paul says this, and he, he didn't, it didn't matter to him. He was gladly... Proclaimed to be a troublemaker for the Most High God. And not only did he they claim to be trouble, but he said, And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Roman. Wow. How would you like to be whenever you walked into a school somewhere or to your work or to a store somewhere, they looked at him and said, here comes that troublemaker that's going to tell us about Jesus all the time, that's going to tell us there's only one way into heaven, that we need to repent, we need to be baptized, we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and we need to change our lifestyle, and we need to be living the way we're talking. Hmm. Wouldn't that be awesome if you walked into some place and they recognized you as that type of person? But no, we walk in and they go, hi, good to see you again, which is okay too. Because you know what? That gives me room to slide it in there. Hey, let me tell you about my friend. Let me tell you about Jesus, amen? Amen. Because you see, when Paul and Silas, if they had not been troublemakers, there were the jailers that day, the people that were in there that day, would have never seen God's glory show the way it should have been shown. The word says that not only the jailer was saved, but he went to the household where the jailer was, and his whole family got saved that day. Hallelujah. Why? Because Paul and Silas, they were labeled troublemakers for the kingdom of God. They didn't care what anybody else thought. They didn't care what it said. As a matter of fact, Paul was brought out to the city outside and left for dead. But then he raised up and he walked on and guess what? He continued in the ministry. There's something to this about being labeled a troublemaker for the kingdom of God. Now I know some of you are going to go out with this and you're going to go to these places and you're going to say, Hey, the pastor said I could be a troublemaker. And, I'm gonna, and they're going to call me and I'm going to say, Yes, for the kingdom of God, did you get saved? Did you get baptized with the Holy Ghost? Did you repent of your sins? It doesn't matter what they try to label you as. As long as you know that you're doing it for the kingdom of God. You see, I hate rather be a, labeled a troublemaker than a sitter by. I hate rather be labeled a troublemaker than someone who is slothful. I hate rather be labeled a troublemaker than someone who is asleep. I hate rather be labeled a troublemaker than someone who compromises. I hate rather be labeled a troublemaker than someone who just don't care. There's something to this church. We need to get about the Father's business. The time is drawing nigh. It's getting closer than we ever seen before. So when we look at these scriptures and we see the prophecies being fulfilled, can I tell you that the sky is getting closer to be broken than it's ever been able before. We're getting closer to see our Savior step out on those clouds and call his children home. 
But it's getting closer now that we're seeing so many things. We're seeing the enemy so harder at work. We're seeing so many other new diseases. Why? Because the enemy is hard at work. Church, we need to be harder at work than he is. We need to put him out of business. We need to be labeled that troublemaker that whenever we go into the cities and to the highways and byways, the enemy wants to get out of your way because he's afraid he might get saved too. But no, we've sat in quiet too long. We've sat in a standstill too long. We've been slumbered too long, church. It's time for us to realize that we have a job to do for the kingdom of God. We, we, we talk about it. We preached about it. We sing about it. We look at it and all these things. We had, when Jesus came down and he was born in a manger, yes. And he lived his life, yes. He showed the way, yes. He died on the cross, yes. He rose again, yes. But it, can I tell you, he's at the right hand of the Father, Yes, but there is something that for me and you to do. He has showed the way. He says, look, it doesn't matter what comes or goes. You got to stay the course. You got to preach the gospel. You got to live the word. You got to teach the word. And most of all, it don't matter. You got to stand on that word. When the enemy comes raging like a wind, you can look at it and say, peace, be still. When he looks at you and says, you're going to die, you can say, greater is he that is in me. It don't matter. This body may go to the grave, but hallelujah, this soul is not going to stay in the grave. Why? Because my Savior has already already conquered the grave. Hallelujah. I already have the victory. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what comes or goes. I'm a troublemaker for the kingdom of God. Sometimes we feel like that we're not equipped or adequate or educated or sophisticated or whatever it is we want to call ourselves that we're not ready to do the work for the kingdom of God. But can I tell you, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how much education you got. All God is looking at is looking at our obedient heart that's within us that says, Yes, Lord, send me. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say, and I'll be what you want me to be. That's why Paul and Silas, that's why Elijah was so equipped because they were willing to say, yes, Lord, it don't matter. I don't need that friend. Like it was preached this morning. Sometimes we got to put the friendship aside and say, look, I hate rather see you be mad at me and go to heaven than to be happy with me and go to hell. It don't matter what anybody else thinks. It matters what God thinks. And if you have your Bibles, turn me over to 1 Samuel. Chapter 17. And as I was reading this scripture here, I almost started to shout, but I was afraid I would scare Colton half to death when he's already asleep. I got to, I got to shouting on the inside. I said, God, that I want to be that. I don't want to, I don't want to be this anymore. I want to be that. We're going to start in 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to start with verse 55. And it says this. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistines, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner says, as the soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, inquire those whose son is the stripling is. Can I tell you today, verse 57, it says, And David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him and brought him before Saul if with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Can I tell you tonight, church, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be called a child of God. But I tell you right now, I love it whenever the enemy looks at it and says, Who son is this? Who is that running against us over here? Who's coming after us over here? Can I I tell you, hallelujah, we need to know that the enemy looks at and says, oh, whose son is that over there? And God says, that's my son. That's the one that I chose for this time. This is the one that I said is going to do what I asked him to do. And not only is he going to be victorious. 
victorious, but he's going to show the whole world that he is a child of the Most High God. Whose son do you want to be? Where do you want to fit into the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Can I tell you tonight, when we look at God and we say, God, I want to be that. Even little David, he was fair and confident, and he knew he had a fight before him. But he went out there. He didn't go on his own. He was already prayed up. <laughs> he was already charged up, and the Holy Spirit was already moving in him. It's, uh, the God had already chosen the stones. Uh, hallelujah. God has already directed the path, but David had to do something. David had to be obedient. David had to get about the Father's business. David David had to be labeled that troublemaker that day. David had to be that. Tonight, we can be that. We can be labeled that troublemaker for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Isn't it good whenever we know that there's a God that loves us, that's willing to look down and say, that's my son. That's my daughter, <laughs> whom I'm well pleased. I've chose for such a time as this. Everything was in a line. And when the enemy comes roaring and he cries out, whose son is that? God is already standing there going, that's my child. That's my child right there. And thou can't have nothing to do with him. You can't touch him. You can't have none of him. All you're going to do is be defeated by him because of who he is. Tonight, I ask you, where do you stand in the midst of all this chaos? In the midst of all this world, where do you stand? Are you labeled that person that just goes with the flow? Like my son said this morning, he, he, he was in the gym and someone confronted him about something and it made him go, oh my. He could have said, well, you know what? That's just life and went on with it. But no, he, he said, no, God, there's got to be a change. There's got to be something different. I, I don't want to be labeled the one that just goes with the flow. I want to be the one labeled the troublemaker over here that says, no, huh, I'm going to live the word. I'm going to breathe the word. I'm going to abide by the word. So whenever all hell breaks loose huh, and they look around, they say, what, what, what's going on? They're going to say, that troublemaker is at it again. He's preaching the word. He's living the word, and he's proclaiming victory. You see, that's what David did that day. When he came down there, and he looked, and he seen Goliath taunting the people. And he looked upon him, and he says, Who is this filthy person talking so bad about my God? Who's this, who's this person that are roaring around there like he is somebody? I want to introduce him to my God. I want to show him that he ain't as big as he says he is. And when David looked out there across to him, and, the, and then and Goliath looked at him and he says, This day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slaughter you, boy. I'm going to take you out. And David looked at him with no fear. And he had the troublemaker in his eyes. He says, This day, I will, de I will defeat you, and I will give your body to the fowls of the air. Isn't it time that we stood back, raised our voices towards heaven, and say, this is the day the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what the enemy does. He has no power and no authority. I have been labeled a troublemaker for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to stand on that promises of God. And I'm going to continue to pursue what God wants me to pursue. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. I'm going to go where God wants me to go. So tonight, I'm going to ask you if you would, just stand with me just for a moment.